Join me today as I am back out along the floodplains of the Connecticut River, this time to photograph wood ducks. This species is often considered one of the more beautiful of the North American ducks due to the male's bright coloration on its head and body. I was really excited to see large numbers of these ducks on the water as I typically don't have much luck photographing them even though they are common species in this area. Stick around and I'll share some of my tips on capturing footage of waterfowl, as well as sharing some of the footage I was able to get of the wood ducks and other unexpected visitors while I was sitting on the banks. I love hanging out around wetlands because you never really know what's going to show up. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Todd DeWald and I am a full-time wildlife and nature photographer in New England. In my videos, I take you into the unique and diverse habitats to find and photograph the variety of animals that call this area home. I bring my unique perspectives, as well as my education in fisheries and wildlife science, into my videos and photography to help bring a deeper understanding into the lives of the animals and the habitats they call home. Whether you are a fellow photographer or just love nature, I hope you can relax and enjoy these videos. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this, and thank you for watching. Well, hello everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I am back out at the same location I was in my last video to photograph some more ducks. So it's end of March now when I'm, I'm doing the recording and it's getting pretty close to the end when a lot of these ducks are going to be moving north. So I am here again to try to find what I can see. Um, there's been reports of green winged teal that have been here, uh, pintail ducks. So those are two species I'd really like to find and photograph. Right now, there's some wood ducks out there, some ringneck ducks, and I actually did catch a small glimpse of the green winged teal, but it scooted back into the reeds a little bit. So I kind of, this, uh, this location is, uh, there's a road parallel to a lot of water. Um, it's right next along the Connecticut River, and you can just drive up along this road and find spots to, to get out and take pictures. And as I was coming down here to where I am now, there was a, a small raft of ringneck ducks. I stopped and got some great footage of them. Uh, There's also some tree swallows out again. So I tried to get some more pictures of them. And right now I'm actually set up in the spot where I was last time where I had good success with the ringneck ducks. And there's about five or six wood ducks out here. So I'm just going to get quiet because there's one coming now and let's see what we can get. Wood ducks are some of the easier ducks to identify because they have a unique body style and coloration. Both males and females have a tuft on their head, elongating their head back from their necks. Males have long feathers on their head that erect into a fan when extended. The drakes have a hunter green head with white and black striping, bright red eye, an orange bill with a black tip, and an elaborate patterning on their bodies, including chestnut browns, tans, blacks, and whites. Hidden on the tops of wings are also blues, greens, and purples. The females are also colorful in their own right, with crests on their head with hidden shades of green, a white eye mask with a yellow eye ring on a grayish brown head, and a speckled white and brown body. Along their backs when the wings are folded lies blues and purples that show when the wings are fully extended. The temperature was just warming up here and the insects were emerging from and hanging out on the surface of the water. This allowed for a great food source for the ducks as they moved about quickly on the surface chasing these insects and sometimes snatching them out of midair as they took off. Wood ducks are omnivores, meaning they eat plant and animal matter. Their food preferences change with the season, consuming large amounts of seeds and nuts in the fall and consuming more insects in the spring. 
It has been found that females in springtime consume higher amounts of insects compared to males to assist in gaining appropriate nutrients for egg laying. Today it looked like both males and females were having an all-you-can-eat buffet on the insects along the water. There's a pair of muskrat that are going back and forth. They're actually both up on a mound in the water at one point, but they're kind of going back and forth in front of me. And there was actually a, a lone ringneck duck among the wood ducks. Came out from the reeds to my left. If you've seen my past videos, you know I have had the opportunity to do a lot of waterfowl photography. I have gotten a few questions about how I set up and get the shots I do. If this interests you, keep an eye out on my channel as I'm going to be releasing a video on my setup and techniques as well as settings in the next few weeks. And now might be a good time to say if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so, especially if you're interested in learning how to get photos and videos that you see here today in this video. By subscribing, you won't miss out when that video is released. It was really nice to be able to sit on the banks and have such good luck with these ducks foraging. They are common in this area, but I seldom have good luck photographing them because they are so skittish. Wood ducks are such a beautiful duck species, and I feel like I say that about a lot of birds, but wood ducks in particular are a species that looks very tropical to me. With such bright colors, it doesn't seem like a species that would be found in the northeast. This is awesome, pie-billed grebe. I've only ever seen these once before. 
Oh, such an awesome duck. Actually, I'm not even sure if they're classified as a duck or not. That's another diving bird. No, it just kind of popped out of nowhere. So cool. There it goes. Oh, this is amazing. This is what happens when you just find a good spot to sit. You never know what's hiding in the reeds around you and things can just kind of pop out just like that. Oh, this is just like amazing. This is like constantly holding your breath, just being in awe of being so close to these birds and watching them do their thing. It is, it is perfect. This is definitely my best wood duck pictures I've gotten by far, but possibly even just my best waterfowl pictures. The, the colors are perfect. The tans and browns from the reeds in the background. The sun is coming out a little bit. You can kind of see that. The sun's coming out a little bit. So there's a little bit of brightness, but it's not too harsh. And over to my right, there's some clumps of grass and the green and the browns in the grass in the background of these pictures is just amazing. It's beautiful. And there's just more wood ducks coming, coming back over to this section of the pond. This one pair in particular is just coming over. Um, and it, the section's nice because I kind of have a barrier between me and them. So they're not gonna come that close to me anyway because there's a lot of sticks from shrubs that are growing in the water. And that's about, uh, say about 15 feet out. So they're staying at least that far out. So it's not even like they're feeling threatened by me because they, they kind of have a barrier in between them anyway. And it is just, it's perfect. I don't know where the grebe went. Um, I saw it, it went under, and then the wood ducks came really close, so I was focusing on them. And now I'm not sure where it ended up. I'm hoping it's still in this end of the pond. Um, but, wow, I, uh, I gotta get back though because this female wood duck is coming over this way and it is, it's beautiful. The individuals on the water seemed to be more focused on grabbing all the insects they could rather than minding that I was there. Wood ducks are one of the few ducks that are actually able to perch on tree branches. This is thanks to the claws that are found on their feet and allows them to nest in tree cavities. They commonly use pileated woodpecker holes and are adapted to using man-made nest boxes. With the increase in man-made nesting boxes, as well as the regrowth from forest areas, this has allowed the populations to increase in recent years. As the day progressed, I wanted to try to get some different types of photos of the ducks. I had had my camera close to water level all morning, so I decided to raise my camera up higher. I was hoping to be able to get some reflection shots, which isn't possible having the camera so low to the water. The wind picked up a little bit, however, so it distorted the reflections. And you really kind of have to try to push yourself when you're out here because I've already gotten a lot of photos of water level shots with the ducks, which are great, my favorite shot. Um, but now I'm gonna try to do some different perspectives of the ducks. Try to just get a variety. I've got such a good opportunity right now with the ducks right in front of me that I wanna try to make use of it, try to get some different, different types of shots, um, some with more atmosphere or more environment, some with maybe a silhouette, or reflections, there's a lot you can do.
the sun is out a little harsher now, but it creates another effect for some pictures because now there's the little ripples that are on top of the water and the sun catches it, so it kind of creates a nice little bokeh effect on the surface of the water. Just creates a really nice effect and just adds some different variety to the pictures. Off in the distance were dead snags sticking out of the water. Every once in a while, a red-winged blackbird would perch and start singing from the top of one of these snags. And on one occasion, I was able to get a video of one male calling. I placed my lens on my knees to stabilize it and managed to get a short video of the bird. If you look closely, you can actually see the bird's breath escaping as it calls. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm using my Z9 and what I'm doing for the autofocus is I'm using the animal detect with the bird feature and then I'm also using the, I, I like to use the WC1 setting for the autofocus. It's a customizable feature that you can actually change the size of the autofocus box and it also does eye detect. So what I do is I actually do it kind of in the, the, the shortest height of the box you can do, but then I do too wide, uh, for ducks at least, because then I can kind of focus in exactly where I want the eye to hit, and then it's a little bit wider so I don't need to be right on the eye, and it still tracks it. Sometimes if you have too big of a box, it ends up locking on the, the back or the butt of the bird, especially with the wood ducks. They have a lot of different coloration and the autofocus kind of gets confused sometimes. But if I make the smaller box, I'm able to really pinpoint the eye and it gets really great results. It's gotten pretty bright out here. You can tell the sun is really out strong now. So I'm gonna actually just take a break, sit here and just eat my lunch. The ducks are still out there foraging, but right now it's just a little bit too bright to get any good photos. And there's still a little bit too much reflection on the uh, ripples on the water to get a good reflection shot. I'm gonna keep trying, hopefully when the, it's supposed to get cloudy later. So hopefully when the, uh, the clouds come in, it's not quite as bright, they will have some better luck with that but time for lunch. After lunch, some mallards came out and joined the feast, getting insects off the top of the water. The muskrats were also still active, coming very close to me on a few occasions. I managed to snag a few quick photos as they paddled by. afternoon now. I still have the mallards out in front of me. I have wood ducks. The clouds are rolling in. There's actually a chance of some showers in the next hour or so. And right now the water is really calm 
and it is just beautiful. So I'm hoping the wood decks will come a little bit closer because then I might actually have a chance at doing some reflection shots, but we'll see. That's gonna be it for me today. I'm gonna to end my vlog here. I'm gonna kind of stay here and see if these wood ducks come any closer. They're staying pretty far on the far side of the pond now, but had a great day of photography. Had some really interesting finds. The pipe of grebe, got, a, got to see my first ever green winged teal, and then the muskrat that kept going back and forth. So it was a really great day. Some unexpected finds, and it's always nice. Um, when you have days like that where you're, you're out there for a specific purpose. I know I wanted to photograph ducks and I not only got the ducks, but I also got some other species as well. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. I ended up leaving my spot about an hour after ending my vlog. And as I was heading back down the road, I found the pie-billed grebe foraging on the pond a little farther down from where I was set up. I got into position as close to the bank as I could and managed to get a few shots of this interesting species. As it turns out, the piebald grebe was not the last surprise I had as I was leaving. Perched up in a tree overlooking the ponds was a beautiful adult bald eagle. I set myself up so that there would be trees in the background of the bird and sat waiting to see if the bird would take off. My battery was running low and it started to rain lightly, but I managed to have enough battery to capture a few images as the eagle took off and flew towards the river. This was an amazing ending to an already great day of photography. This is why I love hanging out around wetlands, because you never really know what you're going to find. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.